Hello, my name is Ross Ferguson and welcome to the Access All Areas podcast brought to you by the Student Music Network. And today we are accessing all of them areas because we've got a very, very special guest, Joel Corey. Oh my God, how are you hey. doing? What's going um, on? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing right now. New album out. Um, been touring lots. Just got back from America. Um, crazy chaotic week, but yeah, love it every minute. Um, we're so happy to hear it. There's so much great stuff going on. And I actually have the album right here. I don't know if you can see it. You got the vinyl. It is in all its glory on the vinyl. It sounds banging. It's absolutely brilliant. I can confirm it sounds so good on vinyl. It's so, so good. And we've got a little album breakdown. We're going to go through the songs and I'm going to ask you a few questions. You ready, Joel? Yeah, let's do it. Bang in. Okay, we're going to start on Another Friday Night, which is the title track, which is an absolute banger as well. You know, yeah. all of them are bangers. The whole album is bangers. But this one, I mean, it's quite reflective to me, this uh, single, this track. Um, you had so much success. You've done so much in such a short period of time. How has it been? Is it weird looking back now? Yeah, honestly, the last like four years, I know it's a cliche, but it's it's a total dream come true for me. Um, if you had told me like four years ago that I would even have one hit record in the top 100, I would have been like, oh my God, I would do anything for that. And then, you know, Sorry happened and I got my breakthrough with Sorry. And then, you know, since then it's been a roll, absolute roller coaster. Fast forward to today, I've got my album out with all these hit records and all these amazing collaborations and I, I can't quite believe I've done it. And um, I'm just so grateful, you know, to everyone that I've worked with and all the opportunities and just glad that the album's out now and feels amazing. Yeah, it's so good to hold it. It's just, it's it's amazing. As I say, it's 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 almost like a, um, a compilation. There's so much good music gone in here over the last few years. It's brilliant. Next up, we've got Head and Heart and Bed. And yeah. These videos for these songs were absolutely everywhere. They were all over the music channels. They were all over. They still are. They're just absolutely everywhere. They're brilliant. Did you have a good time creating them and getting behind them and, and really getting stuck in with them? Yeah, that era, like with those records, the music videos were such a big thing for me. And I loved the sort of the creative aspect of them. I worked with a director called Elliot Simpson on all those early videos. And it was very sort of like Black Mirror vibes. And each video had its own little sort of message underlying it. And they were so fun and exciting to work with. I mean, the bed one as well, like um, with Ray and David Guetta, I, I had to play like a robot doll version of myself, which was very fun. I had to be like a human Ken doll. Um, <laughs> so I got, I got very much into that character. <laughs> You did, and you did so well to avoid the cakes as well. The little cupcakes, <laughs> brilliant. Because you're staying fit. I, I don't know how you do it. I can't do it. I eat a cake. I may as well, you know, stick it to my butt, honestly. <laughs> That's how it is. But literally, you do so well with all the fitness, everything. It's just also brilliant. And then next up, we've got um, Out Out and Desire. And these are just such creative projects you know you're working with so many different artists and especially for these two songs we've got so many remixes and yeah. of course you're a dj you know remixing is no stranger to you is it yeah. special to have other people like me remixing your work and interpreting your music how's that okay. been yeah i mean like remixing like you said as a dj is such an important part of what we do i mean i've been doing remixes since i was a teenager even when i used to just make bootlegs and mashups of records they're in a way remixes themselves, you know, it's always like, how do I put my spin on something that then feels good for my own set or my own little twist on stuff. So when other DJs and artists remix my records, I love it. I love seeing what they do. You know, sometimes I'll get a remix of one of my songs and I actually like it better than my version. I end up playing it out. So, um, and also it's nice that sort of friends that I've made over the years in the DJ world, if I've got a new record out and there's someone that I'm really loving that I've made friends with and loving their style, I'll reach out to them and go like, I'd love you to remix my track. And, you know, if they do it and get it back to me, it's just like an exciting part of the process. Yeah. And they're all so, so brilliant. Lovely little bonuses and interpretations of each track. It's, it's fabulous. And on the deluxe edition, we've got Drinking and Hey DJ, which are absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous as well. Um, that one's with Rita Ora. Just, and, probably the most recent as well recent releases recent yeah. uh, single drops do you get nervous like releasing like each single and you know getting into the headspace of okay this is out there it's solidified it's there you know what are people going to think i feel like 
I don't so much get nervous. It's more like an excited feeling because by the time the song is ready to release, I know that I've done as much work on it as possible and got it to the best place I could have done. And I always kind of like almost have a word for myself. I'm like, whatever happens, happens. I couldn't have done any more of my best efforts to, to make this record and, you know, get it to the place it's in. So at that point, I'm like, all right, I hope everyone loves it. I love it. So I hope you love it too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's weird. You know, it is a buzzing feeling. It is buzzing and it's, it's, it's addictive as well, you know, dropping stuff and, you know, yeah thinking about how it's going to be perceived and it's brilliant and as I say everything's been so successful and just so brilliant to see and then we've got Dance Around It and Do You Want Me Baby absolutely yeah. fabulous tracks yeah. and you've worked with so many young artists as well you know Katie, Mabel featuring on, on the record you know yeah. young artists and when you were younger what was influencing you I read somewhere it was Jive Bunny which I thought was brilliant I Somebody else said that to me as well, but I think that's just been edited on my Wikipedia. Cause, yeah, because somebody else asked me this interview, and I was like, and it caught me off guard. I was like, what? <laughs> I saw it somewhere, and I was like, Jive Bunny? That's a bit No one really talks about Jive Bunny anymore. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> Do you like Jive Bunny? Anyway, I'll roll with, I'll roll with it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I mean, do you like Jive Bunny? Like, he's, he's a bit crazy, but, you know. <laughs> you know, I think, I think my, my influences um, sort of as a DJ is, is, you know, when I look at DJs like Calvin Harris and David Guetta and Tiesto, when I look at, like, their careers, you know, they've had hit records and DJed all around the world at the biggest festivals and they've been so consistent for decades. And I think, for me, that's quite inspiring that I can see how they've built like global DJ brands and stayed at the top of the game. And it's, it's, it's actually, it's tough, man. Like it's not easy. And I, I can really respect what they've done and how long they've done it for. So I definitely think those guys in particular inspire me a lot. Brilliant. And again, that's so good to hear, especially about David as well, you know, who's just huge. And it's so great to get those influences and really bounce off each other. Um, we need to get the editors on Jive Bunny. We got Jive Bunny. I can't believe that. That's crazy, <laughs> but amazing. Um, and then we've got 0800, Heaven, Lionheart, History, absolute like monster tracks, you know, huge, just constantly being played over the radio because they're just so good. And I mean, that must be really weird. That must be really weird, you know, hearing yourself on the radio so much. It must be like, I don't know, is, is it kind of surreal? Is it, you know, did you think you'd get here? Uh, I honestly like still get the same feeling every time I hear one of my tracks played on the radio. Like if I'm in an Uber and I hear it come on, I always get my phone out and do like a little sneaky video. <laughs> um, I think for me, I, the first time I ever got a song played on radio, it was like the biggest moment ever. I remember ringing my mum, like going mad, going, oh my God, I've just had my song played on radio. And um, it meant so much to me. And I used to also work in radio. So I was on the other side of it as well, playing other people's music on radio. So I can appreciate it so much. And, um, you know, I'm just so happy that, you know, my records are getting uh, on air and, you know, people are loving them. And I hope that when people hear my tunes on, on radio, it gives them some positive energy, um, you know, makes their day a little bit better. That's all I hope for. And um, I'm going to keep those bangers coming for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like you briefly mentioned about socials there as well, you know, taking videos. And it's great to see all the behind the scenes stuff as well across the socials. You're really good at that. And it's just, it's really, really great to see. Um, and then we've got Sorry and Lonely. And those are the earliest charting songs. And, you know, again, it's going back to that time period. You know, what would you say has been your proudest moment so far? Proudest moment so far? I would have to probably say when Head and Heart went to number one. Um, if I just never ever would have thought I'd ever have a number one single. Like not a lot of people can say that. And, you know, but to do it with MNEK as well, it was so special to be like part of his journey and go, you know, do that record together and all the sort of like, I think that song in particular as well was like in the middle of the pandemic. I think it connected with people on a different level and really brought them some like positive energy and vibes and uplifted them during a really difficult time for most people. And then when it went to number one, and it gives me goosebumps now talking about it, we were all to together and, you know, it was just like, it, every, the world was not in a good place. And it just, that moment was just like, wow, I can't believe this has happened. Yeah, exactly. And you've soundtracked so many 
people's lives across the country you know in dark times and brighter times like nowadays and it's just it's like you say it's just been it's so so good to see and just so just amazing and then we've got i wish and what would you do the final two tracks uh on the standard album and you know you've had there's been so many collaborations on this album so many strong collaborations with artists from all different walks of life different backgrounds some big you know yeah. some smaller and it's so good to see you supporting all kinds of artists you mm-hmm. know on the tracks that you do will we see more collaborations in the future what's the future holding for joel curry yeah definitely i mean like collaborations is is what it's all about you know working with an amazing talent and getting together and you know trying to create magic with other people and for the future i mean 2024 like now i've got the album out i feel like that's the end of that era of my you know the first chapter of that sort of my musical journey and now the album's out i feel this like freedom of like i'm excited to now dig into like the next step and what's going to be the next sound like what am i going to bring for 2024 and um i'm just got a very like excited feeling inside to get back in the studio and get to work and let's see what next year brings yeah exactly and honestly joel thank you so much for giving us your time it's so precious and it's just been great hearing some insight into the tracks into the album it's out now it's available to buy wherever you get your records be supporting it on vinyl because it sounds so so good and cd as well it's fabulous uh thank you ross it was lovely to talk to you mate and i'm I'm sure i'll see you again soon but yeah thank you so much joel and yeah i'll let you go thank you it was lovely meeting you